Hello, I'm Lewis, game designer at Arcade Studio. I'm here today to help you learn how to play your first game of Rune. Let's dive right in. So first what you're going to do is you're going to choose your character from the four different adventures. Each adventure has a unique gameplay and style, so choose the one that you prefer. We're going to keep the archer. So you take your character card and you put it on the side because you will also bring in your character sheet next to it. On that character sheet you're going to fill in your name and the character that you're using. So here the archer. You're also going to bring in the level 1 characteristics of your character on the sheet. So 3 health points that I put here, mainly going to be used for damage. 5 mana points that I put here, we're going to use them for the abilities and the spells. And 5 stamina points that you're going to put here and they're used for using skills, but we'll come back to that later. You start with one fate point. Fate points allow you to resurrect your adventure when you die. And you start with zero experience points as you will gain some by killing monsters and completing quests. You start at level one with a weapon rank of one and a protection rank of one. They will be used for the attack roll or the defense roll of your adventure. Each weapon has a rank, the weapon name and the attack dice, as well as each protection has a uh, protection rank, the protection name and the defense dice of the protection. So here, my first weapon is my bare hands with a weapon rank of one and an attack dice of one black die. And my first protection is my base defense with, the pr with a protection rank of one and a defense dice of one black die. I also have the movement roll here, which is 1d6 plus 4 at all adventures for at the beginning of uh, the campaign. So you put the d6 here, and the rest is your inventory, so you start with nothing as you're going to fill it in during the quests. Once you've done that, you can flip the character sheet over. We're going to look at the completed quests, though we have none because we just started, and the mastered skills. So you're going to bring in your um, character skill deck here, and you're going to choose as a level 1 adventurer one skill between the five base skills that have no prerequisites, which are Adrenaline, Riposte, Backstab, Lightning Attack, and Good Fortune. We're going to keep Good Fortune for the example. So you put the skill on the side, and we're going also going to look at the Mastered Spells. I can see on my abilities that I have the Telemancy ability, so I am a Teleromancy Spellcaster. At level 1, I master two Teleromancy spell fields of Teleromancy 1, which are here, and I put them on the side. Each spell field has a field rank here, so this is the cost of each spell on the spell field. And when using a spell, because it will be used once per quest, you're going to put the cost in mana on the spell when you use it. Remember that for each spell, next to their name, there is their spell type and the spell range. Once you've done that, you can flip the card back, the sheet back, sorry. You can put the dice back where they should be. And you're also going to put the tokens on the sheet. So you're going to put three health points, five mana points, and zero stamina points because you start with zero stamina at the beginning of each quest, you will gain it during the quests. You're now all set. If you're going to play as a Master of Shadows, this is your setup. First, you're going to take the Master of Shadows screen, which is the equivalent for the adventurer's character cards, and you're going to flip it to unveil its secrets. As a Master of Shadows, you're going to reveal the dungeons that the adventurers will explore, and you'll also control the monsters that they will face. In order to do so, you're going to take the quest book. The quest book is for the Master of Shadows eyes only, so if you're an adventurer, you can skip this part. Each quest has two pages. The first page is the dungeon map, with the green square which is the starting point for all adventurers in every quest, and also the rooms of the dungeon. To place a room, first you're going to place the tile, then you're going to place the furniture, then the doors, and last but not least, your monsters. The amount of monsters that you're going to place depends on the amount of adventurers you're facing. If you're facing two adventurers, only place the grey monsters. If you're facing three or more adventurers, add the orange monsters. If you're facing four adventurers, you will also add the red monsters. The second page has a list of events linked, linked to the quest. There are three types of events. Adventurer events, NPCs events, and Master of Shadows events. The first two will be placed on the boards and the adventurers will tell the trigger phrase to the app. 
The third type, however, the Master of Shadows events, will be hidden from the adventurers and only you, Master of Shadow, will tell the app whenever the conditions are met. This is not the only thing that is hidden to the adventurers, as there is also the boss's characteristics and the traps in the dungeon. If you look at your abilities, you can see that there is the ability Trap Dungeon, so whenever an adventurer steps on a trap, you can tell the spirit of a rune that a trap has been triggered. Take a good look at your abilities because they will be useful in different moments in the game. When that has been done, I can place the last part of my setup. The Pact with the Shadows Board You can force adventurers to make pact with the shadows, which, is, which give shadow cards. A shadow card is placed on the stamina reserve of each adventure and will take any stamina already on there or any new stamina. Whenever the stamina of the card is full, it's transferred to the stamina reserve of the Master of Shadows and the card is discarded. The, your reserve of stamina as a Master of Shadows is unlimited and the stamina will be used just like the adventures for skills. As a level 1 Master of Shadows, you will choose two skills from the base 5 skills of the game. For each quest, you're going to look at the monsters of the game and you're going to prepare the monster card before. Whenever the adventurers first meet a monster, you're going to place the monster card just next to the Pact with the Shadows board. You're all set. Now that you've seen the setup, we're going to do a little demo with the first quest of the campaign, the Dolan's Mill. I'm going to play with two adventurers, the Archer and the Warrior, that I'm going to place on the board. And there will also will be a Master of Shadows for this game. So what you're going to do to start the game is you're going to launch the app and click on Start a Game. Then you're going to choose if you're playing with a Master of Shadows or without a Master of Shadows. And then you choose your quest. We're now going add, to add in the players of the quest. So a Master of Shadows level 1, an Archer level 1, and a Warrior level 1 as well. And then the adventure begins. You are on your way to Orival, a peaceful village nestled in the heart of the mountains. And you are enjoying the glorious surrounding landscape. Suddenly, the voice of an annoyed old woman interrupts your gazing wonderment. You see the crown rushing out of her mill in haste and making big gestures at you as she sees you. She explained that her mill is overrun by rodents of unusual size and that she just cannot get rid of them. Your bravery is immediately kindled. Without an ounce of hesitation, you followed her to the trap door leading to the basement of the mill. The quest, Dolan's Mill, starts. Master of Shadows, your phase is starting, it's your turn to play. For this quest, your objective is to kill or injure each of the adventurers. Don't forget. If no monsters are present in the dungeon at the beginning of your phase, you can use the ability, Power of Shadows, written on your panel. So each turn has three phases. The first one is the Spirit of Ruins phase, which has just ended, and where she tells you random events, beginning of the quests, and more stuff. The second phase is going to be the Master of Shadows phase, and then the third one is going to be the Adventurous phase. So the Master of Shadows phase starts, but there are no monsters active, so like the Spirit of Rune just reminded you, you can look at the Master of Shadows ability, Power of Shadows, which allows him to roll two blue dice and check for the lightnings. Here there are two lightnings, and that adds two stamina points to the Master of Shadows stamina reserve. He's going to be able to use them for skills later on. Now, there are no monsters active, so his phase is over. The phase of the adventure is now starting, and each adventure has two basic actions that they can do per turn, and then three actions that they can do. Basic actions are movement, combat action, detecting traps, searching a room or searching a furniture, preparing for battle, or resting by the campfire. So the warrior is going to start, and she's going to move 
with a movement roll of 1d6 plus 4. So she's going to roll her d6, which is 6. So she has 10 squares of movement, and she's going to move 1, 2, and 3 just next to the event. She will now trigger the event, and the Master of Shadows in his quest book here, you can see that the first event in the first room has the trigger phrase, your adventurer examines the male seller. So the warrior will sell that to the spirit of Rune. The warrior examines the male seller. As you look around the room, you see torn bags scattered on the ground and huge rat prints on the floor. Suddenly, you hear some noise in the stairs, and a young woman appears. Um, hi, I'm Faye. Mom's a bit scared for you, so she sent me to give you these to defend yourselves. I found a slingshot in the attic and these two big pieces of wood. They should be very useful. Sorry, I'm not staying, but those rats really scare me. Good luck and be careful. The miller's daughter leaves her loot on the floor and exits hastily. You retrieve two bludgeons and one slingshot that you can share between adventurers. Write this loot in the weapon section of your character sheet. You can remove the token from the board. So, as you can see, the adventurers had just earned some loot. They've earned one slingshot, so the archer is going to use the slingshot because he's the only one that can equip it. If we look at it on the app. So the slingshot has a weapon rank of 1, the name of the weapon is slingshot and the attack dice of the weapon is 1 black die. He's also going to have a bludgeon because there are 2 and 2 adventures, so weapon rank 1, sorry, okay. Weapon rank 1, weapon name bludgeon, and attack dice 2 black dice. So now that they've collected their loot, the warrior will be able to finish her movement because as, detect, as triggering an event isn't a basic action, it does not end her movement. So she's going to move one more square, which is four, and open the door. Here, the Master of Shadows will start by putting in the new tiles. Then putting in the doors. Adding the furniture and then adding the monsters. Because those monsters are revealed, he's also going to show the monster card with the monster's characteristics on it. So there are two rats, and the rats uh, have one HP and can move up to 10 squares diagonally. They give one XP to the adventurer that kills them and have an attack roll of one black die diagonally. They have no defense, they have the skill group attack for free and abilities on the back. The warrior now moves one square after the door because you cannot open a door and stay behind it. You have to open it and then move one square up after it. And she's going to end her movement next to her, this rat. She's now going to attack and going to use the attack roll of her bludgeon because it's her weapon. So she's going to roll two black dice. And she has no skull, meaning she will not deal any damage. Fortunately, she has the ability Ranger, which means that for one mana point, she can change the result of a combat die on a, me a melee attack roll, which is this one, to obtain one extra skull or one extra stamina. So she's going to change this. So she has now one skull and one lightning. She's going to earn one stamina and she will deal 1 damage to the rat. The rat has no defense and 1 HP, so the rat dies. The warrior will now write on her character sheet 1 experience point. She has done her 2 basic actions, so the warrior's turn is over. It's now the archer's turn that will begin, and the archer will have the same movement roll with 1d6 plus 4, he's gonna move diagonally because of one of his abilities, so one, two, three, next to the cupboard, and he's going to search the furniture. The archer searches the cupboard. In this worm-eaten cupboard, you pick up two ancient gold coins, then one light rune with mead. 
So, like the spirit everyone just told us, the archer just earned two gold coins, so we're gonna put it on his character sheet, and he also earned a light rune and a mead that I should put in this character sheet. I'm not going to do it for the purpose of this video, but now you know. He now has also done his two basic actions, so both adventurers have done all their actions and have finished their turn. We're now going to click on the little button on the... Um, sorry, on the button left of the app to signify that we're um, doing a new turn. Turn 2 starts. Warrior, you are hungry for battle. If you consume a mead during this turn, in addition to its effects, add a black die to your attack roll. The call of gold is stronger than the grip of the shadows. If the adventures have a total of more than 50 gold coins, the monster with the lowest attack roll joins them you till the end of the quest. You keep your coins. The adventurer with the fewest health points steps on a strange bottle that is still full. You win a bottle of mead. Add this substance to your character sheet. So, just like you've seen, there are some random events that happened in this turn. We're gonna bypass the first ones and we're all only going to look at the mead bottle that the adventurer will win. The archer has three health points, the warrior has six help health points, so the archer is going to win to earn a bottle of mead that he writes on his character sheet. The face of the spirit of rune is over and it's now the face of the master of shadows. So he's going to play his rat, which has 10 squares diagonally for movement. So one, two, three, four, five, and six right behind this adventure. And the Master of Shadows will be able to use his skill Backstab. And will also use his skill Adrenaline with one stamina point. So the rat will use two black dice as his attack roll. Okay, so Thanks to Backstab, we're going to modify this. And this is now the final attack roll of this rat. The rat now deals one damage to the archer, which must defend. So the archer is going to roll the defense roll, which for now is only one black die. The archer did not defend, so the archer loses one HP. However, he does win one stamina point. All monsters have played, so it's now the phase of the adventures. So, the archer is going to use his spell, Fulgurating Stalagmite, with a success test, so two blue dice, and using one, stem, one mana point, sorry. You can see here that I've done two lightnings on my success test. On Frill Glitching Solid it's written that if I perform two lightnings on my success test, I can then deal two yellow dice of damage to the rat, which I'm going to do. I deal two damage to the rat, he has no defense and one HP, the rat dies. So the archer can now write one experience points on his character sheet. The archer has attacked this turn with his spell, he's now going to move. So 3 plus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. He ends his turn here. The warrior is now going to play. She's going to move. 3 plus 4 again. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And she's going to search the barrel. The warrior searches the barrel. Excellent. Under a pile of shabby clothes. You see two muddy gold coins. So the warrior has played her movement in a search. So she's also finishing her turn here. You've now seen two turns of the game. I hope that helped. Now you're all set to explore the mini dungeons of the game and fight your way out to save the world of a room. If you have any question whatsoever, please join our Discord server where the community and the team are there to help you or read your feedback. Do remember one thing though, our mobile app is scalable and the game is evolving day after day. Have fun on the lens of a rune.